is National Eating Disorder Awareness Week. Yeah, about 30 million Americans struggle with some type of eating disorder, including anorexia, bulimia, and binge eating. So we want to talk to Lauren Smoller. She is a vice president in charge of education for the National Eating Disorders Association. Good morning, Lauren. Thanks for being with us this morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. That number right there, 30 million America, Americans. I mean, that's, that's shocking. So about what percentage are kids and teens? So we do know that the most, the majority of people who are getting eating disorders do tend to get them at a younger age. We also know that people are experiencing eating disorders later in life, and more and more people are seeking help for eating disorders later in life as well. But we hear the most um, cases from people who are about 13 to 30. And so what are the most common types of eating disorders in children? So we know the, the major eating disorders that um, most people who have heard of eating disorders have heard of anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, binge eating disorder. There's also avoidant restrictive food intake disorder, uh, which is a little bit of a different eating disorder, but um, also really serious and in need of professional help and other specified feeding and eating disorders. Can we talk about the tips then that you have for parents, how they can learn about disorders and talk to your kids about these things? and when you can when you need to seek help yeah so a great first step if you're concerned about uh, a child that might have an eating disorder is to learn everything that you can about eating disorders it is the signs the symptoms what are the warning signs and then bring that to the attention of your child tell them about what you observe that's concerning have you seen changes in mood has their relationship with food changed are they no longer comfortable eating in front of other people are they uh, are they uh, finding that their relationship with food, the, the things that they're willing to eat look different than they did before. Mm. Address those concerns and encourage them to get help from a professional who specializes in eating disorders as soon as possible. Yeah, you talk about the And then connect. Go ahead. And connect yourself with a professional as well for that guidance as a parent. Yeah, you know, and you're talking about those warning signs, right? But there's always, a, I guess, a, a starting point for, for this. So how, I guess, do these disorders start? Is there an easy answer? There's not an easy answer. You can be at risk for an eating disorder for a number of different reasons. There are social factors that can affect someone's risk for an eating disorder, such as bullying. There are psychological risk factors. If somebody's already experiencing anxiety or depression um, or other mood disorders, they may be at an increased risk for an eating disorder. There's also a genetic predisposition. Mm -hmm. So if somebody in your family has already had an eating disorder, it doesn't mean you're going to get an eating disorder, but you're certainly at an increased risk. Can we talk about prevention? I have a 10-year-old girl, a 10-year-old daughter, and an 8-year-old daughter, both who are dancers. They both take ballet. And my 10-year-old one day, who she's very thin, said to me one day, do my thighs look fat? I think my thighs are getting fat. She's 10. And it's, it scares me to think where that could go from here. So how do you prevent them from spiraling out of control and being worried about their weight and body image? Yeah, it's hard to prevent, but there are things that you can do as a parent to set good boundaries and model really good relationships with food and with your body. Think about how you're talking about your body in front of your child, how you're talking about your relationship with food, making sure that you're make, making those things neutral or even positive mm. when possible for your child and really modeling to them those healthy relationships. And if there are concerns and you're hearing concerns, explore that with them and allow them to feel like they can ask for help if they do have concerns that are more um, in need of professional support. Yeah, and, and you know, t can you talk about some of, is like body dysmorphia, is that a bit of an eating disorder where you you, you, you may limit what you eat because you, you are in shape, but you look in the mirror and see something different? Body dysmorphia is slightly different, but they definitely play a role together. And certainly you hear of a number of people who experience body dysmorphia who are also experiencing eating disorders. Yeah, and that could go for men and women. Yes, absolutely. Eating I, disorders can affect people of any gender. Yeah, and I was going to say, that's. I think that's important to mention, that it's not just girls. Mm -hmm. it, boys, too, suffer from this, and you have to pay attention to that as well. Yeah, absolutely. We know that eating disorders don't discriminate. They can affect people of any gender, any size, any ethnicity, any socioeconomic status, any age. Yeah. All right. Lauren Smoller, thank you so much from the National Eating Disorders Association. We really appreciate your time this morning.